ShireSociety.com. Stop! Don't go in. The Federal Fort, also known as the Norris Cotton Building in Manchester, New Hampshire. So, I guess I'm basically just using this place as a backdrop to uh, rant about my concerns regarding the handling of the uh, Malheur, I hope I'm saying that right, the Malheur Wildlife Refuge Crisis or the Bundy Rebellion or whatever you want to call it. Your tax dollars at work right here. But, uh, as you know, one of the uh, residents of New Hampshire, his name is Jerry DeLamus, he was arrested for participating in some form or fashion without hurting anyone. Uh, in the Malheur uh, issue, the Bundy, Bundy Rebellion, both of them basically. So I'm here trying to do uh, what I wish more New Hampshire folks were doing, and that is to stand in front of their federal building with a sign. But my theory is that the biggest difference is the difference between zero and one. So uh, if you've got zero protests in front of this building, that has a dramatically different effect from one. Now, of course, on a scale of one to ten, I'm going to be a one. But uh, this is what I can do today. Unfortunately, a Saturday. Now, it's been a source of some sadness for me that uh, after Jerry DeLamis, New Hampshire resident, was arrested by the feds with a SWAT team and all that, uh, this brilliant infrastructure surrounding the, the, the Bundy Rebellion uh, was never put to use to make a good demonstration. Now they did put a lot of people in the courtroom quickly, uh, twice, and I, they may be able to do that again. But uh, I just I like protests. I like to see them. I like to hear about them. It, 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 again, it doesn't do that much, but it's the difference between zero and one. So, what I would recommend people do if you have problems with a Bundy-related arrest, you think someone shouldn't have been arrested, and I think none of them should have been arrested because I can care less about that. So, uh, I think protest that. You just go by yourself to the nearest federal building and you stand there for a few minutes with a flag. You get a few pictures of yourself. You put it on YouTube. And every federal building in the country ideally should have a little protest like this. It would be more powerful than having 200 people, people in one place. And that will happen, I think, later this week or later this month. There's going to be a, a big uh, rally connected, yeah, you know, it's an, a, a land rights rally directed against the federal government. That's going to be at the State House on March 23rd. And that's good. But uh, I just think there's no substitute for stuff you can do by yourself without con a lot of consulting with others. Um, there's also some, a historical note I wanted to bring up that I've been thinking about a lot with relation to the uh, Bundy crisis, and that is the, um, I don't know if you're familiar with the Easter Rising in uh, Ireland. Uh, there was a situation that developed there that was actually very similar to the Malheur uh, crisis, and what happened was uh, a bunch of uh, Republicans in Southern Ireland or in Central Ireland, I don't know, I think it's in Dublin, uh, rose up and seized a government building, right? And uh, now then they tried to defend it by force, and there was an actual shootout. British brought in artillery. I think they may have held it for days, but not for weeks. This happened in, uh, I think, spring of 1916, and this was in the middle of World War I. A lot of Irish were very sympathetic to the British cause in World War I, so they didn't like the idea of these rebels doing this stuff at this time. Um, but the British government overreacted, and what happened was the, uh, they started executing people who'd been involved in this. And that changed things and actually resulted in the Irish War of Independence, which, which was successful. Uh, you know, uh, fighting violently tends to not really bring much freedom, but uh, it does tell us, the federal government, that they need to be cautious about how much they overreact with this crisis, if you want to call it a crisis. Uh, and it seems like the number of arrests is not really proportionate to the, uh, to the size of the event. Unless the government's just scared of um, people. <laughs> I think they are. Anyway, uh, a couple other thoughts that were coming. Well, yeah, I would like to urge the, uh, the supporters of Jerry DeLamis, if you want to 
don't let the federal government determine when you're going to meet, right? If you're only going to court events and then you're just letting them just set the agenda in terms of timing, it's better really to set a date and time for a demonstration. Usually a couple hours before a court hearing is a good time because then if they change the court hearing, uh, then you've still got the great demonstration everyone came to. But if they keep the court hearing at its original time, as the feds have been good about doing a, a, a in New Hampshire with the Lamus case, uh, then you at least had everybody come to a real event instead of having them come to a courtroom date and time that didn't happen. The old world is collapsing, and it's going to take its slave driver governments with it. But what will rise up in their place? In New Hampshire, the Shire Society has a plan, a thriving web forum, and a history of action. You can sign up right now at ShireSociety.com.